All right, guys, we're back with another educational video. And this week, I want to talk about vegan protein sources versus animal protein sources, specifically whey protein. There's a new study that just came out that's really cool. The study is called Differential Responses of Blood Essential Amino Acid Levels Following Ingestion of High-Quality Plant-Based Protein Blends Compared to Whey Protein a double blind randomized crossover clinical trial. And this was in Nutrients, it's open access. You can get the full text and we'll put the link in the description. So this was a really cool study. As I talked about in my Game Changers debunks, plural, one of the problems with vegetarian sources of protein is they have lower levels of leucine. They also tend to be less digestible and so you need to eat more of them in order to get the same amount of leucine and have the same potential anabolic effect. Well, this study, looked at, okay, if we equate leucine and we equate essential amino acids, do we get the same results in terms of blood levels of essential amino acids and leucine? So what they did was they compared whey protein isolate to three other vegan blended proteins. They had a blend of pea protein and pumpkin protein with sunflower protein added to it. And then they had another blend that represented a hydrolyzed version of the blend of pea protein and pumpkin protein. And the reason they did that was because of some of the anti-nutrients that are in vegan protein sources. They wanted to use the process of hydrolysis to hopefully get rid of some of those. Now, in order to match the leucine contents of the whey protein isolate, they had to use about 30% more protein in the plant protein blends. This equated to about 33 to 34 grams of protein depending on the blend, whereas WPI only had 24 grams of protein, whereas all the different groups had 2.6 grams of leucine and 12 grams of essential amino acids. So they fed these different blends and they used a crossover design, meaning that each study subject served as their own control. So if I was a subject in the study, on one occasion, I'd come in and consume the whey protein. On another occasion, I'd come in and consume the pea protein and pumpkin protein blend. Then another occasion, I would consume the pea protein, pumpkin, and sunflower blend. Then on another occasion, I consume the hydrolyzed plant blend. Now, this kind of crossover design always has a washout period. To make sure that they don't interact with each other, they give long enough apart that each different treatment can be tried. So what's cool about this is each person has their own control, makes it a little more tightly controlled, and the results are a little bit more interpretable. It also kind of changes some of the statistics you can do, and it just makes things a little more tight. So they fed these different protein blends and then looked at the essential amino acid response for four hours afterwards and the leucine response. Now remember, these different proteins had the same leucine and essential amino acid content as the whey protein. What they found was really interesting. The area under the curve for whey protein was still significantly greater than any of the vegan blends. And it was by like 20 or 30%. So even though they had the same leucine content, same essential amino acid content, and actually the vegan protein sources had more total protein, whey protein still had a significantly greater increase in blood levels of amino acids. The authors gave a few different reasons speculating why it might be. One might be that there is some evidence that amino acids from vegan proteins tend to get sequestered in the liver more and don't reach the plasma as readily as something like whey protein isolate. Another possibility is the anti-nutrients, although the hydrolysis blend should have helped some of that, but it was only a 15% hydrolysis, so it wasn't fully hydrolyzed, so perhaps that would have helped. But the downside to hydrolyzing a protein is it makes it taste really bitter. Even if you had a plant-based protein that was 100% hydrolyzed and presumably getting rid of all the anti-nutrients, it would taste pretty bad. So this suggests that whey protein even when you equate leucine, even when you equate essential amino acids. And the other thing they equated was PDCOS, meaning the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score was the same. So basically PDCOS is the gold standard for measuring protein quality, and it looks at bioavailability as well as the uh, basically the essential amino acid components to make sure no essential amino acids are limiting. So even though the PDCOS was the same for all the proteins, it was a one, which is basically as high as you can get, even though leucine was the same for all the proteins, and even though the essential amino acid content was the same for all the proteins, whey protein was still about 30% better at increasing the area under the curve over the four hour period, blood levels of essential amino acids and blood leucine. That's pretty wild. So that suggests that whey protein may still be superior. Now it's important to point out that 
the plant proteins still increased blood leucine levels by double. So they doubled compared to baseline, but whey protein was still way higher than that. This suggests that whey protein may be superior even when you equate for all these other intrinsic factors of plant proteins. Now, I know what's gonna come next. Who funded the study? Well, I'm so glad you asked. So the study was funded by Danone, which does in fact produce dairy products and a vegan line of products. So they also have plant products. And it was funded by Sequel Naturals, which from what I can see online is basically all vegan products. So I don't think the funding source probably screwed with this because both companies sell vegan products. One company does sell dairy products, but if they sell dairy and vegan products, they probably don't really care which one is better. In fact, you might actually argue that it'd be better for the vegan source to turn out better because then they'd have something pretty unique. All right, guys, that's it for this week. If you have any questions, leave them below. And if you're not a dickhead about it, maybe I'll answer them. In the meantime, make sure you click the links in the description. Go check out some of our merchandise and educational products, and I will catch you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you like these videos, please click the links in the description to check out some of my educational books where you can learn more about fat loss and contest prep.